So this is something we launched at reInvent. Uh, this is called the Cost Optimization Hub. Now, um, we, we set out to go solve several problems in the optimization sort of area uh, industry, which is it's really hard to do commitment management and resource management at the same time. Um, so what we did is we built a new dashboard homepage in the console that brings commitment recommendations and right size recommendations and idle recommendations all together. And then it deduplicates the savings amount. And that's important because that's pretty hard to do, uh, especially if you've built your own optimization dashboards or homepages uh, in your organization. Because, um, for example, if you had a recommendation to delete something, but you also had a recommendation to add a savings plan or a reservation for that same resource, the amount of savings you get from those two different recommendations is not compatible with each other. And so it double counts the amount of savings because you might save 50, 60% from buying an RI or a savings plan for that resource. But if you wanted to delete it, you wouldn't buy that savings plan for it. So what the cost optimization hub does is it deduplicates all of the savings and keeps one recommendation per resource, or if their recommendations are compatible, it'll keep two. So you might have, for example, two recommendations that are compatible with each other. You might have a right size recommendation and a savings plan recommendation. And what will happen is the cost optimization hub will reduce the savings amount from the savings plan value because you're at a smaller size. And so it not only deduplicates from a recommendation perspective, it'll actually lower the savings amount by uh, you know, combining and comparing the recommendation types across each other. So now you have a savings number. So in, in this case, it shows 2000 a month for this, this uh, one of my accounts. Um, that is a, it's a number that's trustworthy. It's a number that's realistic and achievable for you to go get. And that's so important because I, I see this a lot of times with customers where they'll, they'll set like a, a savings target that is very difficult to get because it assumes you can take every single recommendation perfectly and the savings number is 100% achievable and accurate. And that's not always the case because you might have scenarios where certain recommendations aren't realistic because you have product requirements or it's a backup environment or, or so on and so forth. So we wanna make this savings number really a more realistic, trustworthy and achievable number. So our FinOps teams are not in a situation where they're trying to chase a target that they'll never hit. We want achievable targets. We want realistic outcomes that you can go get. And then what's really cool is on the bottom here in the smaller text, you can see not just the total savings amount, but what percentage of your AWS spend this number represents. So this is a cool KPI. You could take this data and, and you know grab it via an API or uh, one day when we have exports, you'll be able to export this too. But you can now convert this to a KPI. Are you reading the comments? Because <laughs> oh, someone's no. just said feature export. <laughs> export. Yeah, working on it, working on it. Uh, you this know, person's people... raised a feature request while watching the show. So we, we are listening, um, we are listening. Great feature request, super insightful. And we, we are, yes, we will do that. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned. Yeah, uh, we're excited about that feature. So with this, you can KPI it, trend it over time. And so now you have an ability to take your optimization initiatives and uh, track behavior. Because like if, if you track the savings percentage or the, the potential savings as percentage of your bill, over time, you can track behavior, do it by business unit or by account or by region or, or whatever you have by tag, because um, we have tag data and all of the cost optimization hub. And so like literally you can come in here and aggregate your savings amount by tag value. You pick your key and your value pair. For example, I don't know if I have any tags. Oh, I do have tags. <laughs> so um, you can pick your key tag value pair like owner or something like that. And then I only have, I don't have any owner tags, but I have the key. Then you can look at the savings potential by org. Right. And then you can take a look at this percentage by tag value. And then you can track by business unit. How are people doing? Are people reducing the percentage? Are they reducing the total savings number? Right. We want to really give you the tools you can KPI trend track over time. Because again, like the harder part of optimization is not the tooling, it's the behavior. So, how do we really help people by give them the data set that they can track and measure their own success on optimization? But then, trend it over time and say, how, how am I doing this quarter? How am I doing against my overall 
savings potential, right? And then yeah. and new Alex, opportunity. I was, I was going to say, Alex, just, we've only got two minutes left, but I don't know if, if you have any thoughts about like how this you think this is going to like affect how customers see data and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think, and and I know, you know, Rick has talked to the team a lot in the the process of getting here and getting to this place, and so customers, especially customers that have worked directly with us. Um, you, your voice was heard in this, right? And so, um, so don't shy away for continuing to have your voice in here. I think for me, it really is like uh, more, it's like the central place of it, right? I, I think I like to play with data and look at different ways to see data and see what kind of data I have. And I think that like the biggest benefit is like having that central view and that like one view on here. Um, and I know from a customer standpoint that I've yet to have a customer that like hasn't started diving into it that isn't really excited about it, right? I think um, there's no harm in sh showing savings and and different and and cool ways. And the biggest thing that I think Cost Optimization Hub comes in here and does and touches on what Rick said at the beginning is it's not supposed to be these like one-time fixes, right? It's a hub so that it's like part of your practice. It's part of going in and you know like having that central point of visibility um, versus like one time cleanup or one time this or that, because FinOps is truly a, a practice, right? It's not, it's not necessarily like these one time exercises. Yeah, definitely. All right, last minute uh, also, Rick, what else do you wanna show us in the hub? Yeah, so um, once you filter, um, or you aggregate based on what you want, and then you can add filters. Say, say you were going to do it by tag or organizational boundary or something like that, your key value pair. Mm -hmm. Then you click view opportunities. And this is all of the individual recommendations that came together to aggregate into that savings number. So now you can deep dive on them. You can also group and ungroup them. There's this little switch at the top, right? So that way, if you want to look at all of the recommendations for a single resource at a time, and that's really cool because then you can, uh, you know, if you're going through and you, you're like, I want to solve optimization for these five resources, you can group all of the recommendations together for one resource at a time, and then you can investigate them. So if I uncheck this, it will explode oh, wow. out every single individual recommendation. And then if you want to group them back together, you can flip this back on and it kind of condenses it all back down into a much shorter list. And so now you can kind of go through resource by resource and optimize the whole thing all at once. And that's because it's kind of overwhelming. When you, when you look at a list of, say you have a big organization, you look at a list of a thousand recommendations, it's so overwhelming. So this way you can sort, you can condense all the recommendations, sort by highest estimated monthly savings here, which is the left column, go find the highest savings recommendation. So you have 20 minutes at the end of the day on a Friday go sort highest recommendation value, go take five recommendations, right? Go move the needle a little bit. And yeah. if you just take maybe five recommendations a week and go execute them, whether it's schedule a right size or, or delete some unused resources, if you have very limited time to go attack your optimization opportunity, that's okay. You can filter or sort based on the highest savings potential and still have very good results without having to invest just a, a tremendous amount of time figuring out how to build an execution platform or framework for your organization. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you build um, into it, ideally you get there, but in the short term, you can just sort based on highest value and go just yeah. get that working through. Awesome. And that is a great finishing point for today. Um, that is your homework, everybody. Go check out Cost Optimization yeah. Hub. Go move that needle and uh, go make some small changes. Every little helps. <laughs>